Hey, uh, Joe Janica, Jim Life Media at the Monica Branch Show here Woo! live at the Olympia. That's right, that's, that's right. Venetia Resort, Las Vegas, Nevada. And we're interviewing some great guests out here today. Uh, nobody uh, greater than the sleep expert here, or uh, sleep coach, because that's important Everybody's to me. Everybody's going to need you after the Olympia. Nick Lamb, thanks <laughs> for going to rest yeah. after this, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I I've got that. this sleep situation, I've had uh, this, yeah. It is so true. It, you might be the I'm most important guest to me been on the show yet. And you're making, making me roster. sleepy just talking about sleep. Oh perfect, goodness, perfect. Right? It's working. It's, it's working. working. Oh, yeah. Gosh, yeah, I love it. Nightmare. It's a nightmare, right? It, yeah. is, it is a nightmare. It is, yeah. No, it's unintended. no sleep is a nightmare. It is. it is, yeah. It's a widespread issue, right? I mean, depending on what statistics you see, it's anywhere from a third of the population, half the population, and sometimes it's even more, right? It depends yeah. on what does it mean to struggle with sleep. Is it trouble falling asleep? Is it trouble staying asleep? Is it just waking up not feeling fully refreshed or not being your best, right? Which is where a lot of people fall where especially nowadays people have just gotten used to kind of operating below baseline yes you know if they've slept like crap for a long time it's just that's the norm that's what they expect they get used to feeling like that and and, and then they get stuck in those cycles right so yeah and then sleep with performance right we're here at the olympia performance uh, sleep well, right performance and sleep yeah is that what you said I was like performance, sleep, like sleep performance, sleep, sleep performance. performance. Yeah. yeah, like it's sleep. Do we coin that? It's a thing. I think it's, it's a, a thing. thing. Oh, yeah, it's it a thing is now. a sling, right? Sleep, yeah. Sleep perform. Sleep, sleep performance. Sleep performance. It could be either way. Go off on tangents. <laughs> but no, that's seriously though. It, it, it's all about performance. Oh, it's all about sleep to perform. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I got me all yeah. Confused. yeah, I mean, no matter what facet of performance you're talking about, yeah. whether you're talking about the performance itself, whether you're talking about your ability to recover from that performance, yep. right? Sleep is going to play a role, and then obviously your role, your you're staying healthy throughout that, right? Outside of just the performance, every facet of your health and well-being is impacted by sleep as well. And I think the biggest thing that I try and harp on with people with sleep too is it just impacts how you go about your life, how you experience your life, right? And that sounds kind of corny or cliche, but it's true, right? Every single facet of how you experience your life, right? How you interact with the people that you care about, the energy levels that you have, right? Your mood, all those things are impacted directly by sleep. So for me, it's the ultimate life enhancer, right? And it's right there, it's low hanging fruit. Right. So. It doesn't cost anything necessarily. It does not, it does not. Right? It does kind not. of like That's fasting, true. like you, you, you can have so many positive benefits from it and it doesn't cost anything it actually costs less absolutely but, absolutely yeah yeah so uh, you know i was uh, studying nutrition uh, years ago through a, a company that did nutrition um certifications yep. and i remember he was so big on sleep is first for sure. before everything else sleep is the most important foundational principle yep. and that is nutrition and then it's you know exercise and most people have exercise first right yep and sleep was kind of at the bottom. And then what is the old thing that people always said, oh, you can sleep when you're dead. And I'm like, who started that? Like, that's yeah, who, horrible to who say. Coined that? Who coined and, that? Yeah. And I, yeah, right? It's like, yeah, was it a doctor that coined it that didn't, I that wanted know, to prescribe sleep medication? I don't know, but that <laughs> right? it's you, it's crazy. You still see that narrative exist, like especially in the corporate world, right? You see a lot of that. And people who are up late responding to emails, people who are up early responding to emails, those people are rewarded, right? They're the ones who get promoted. They're the ones who get praised. and. You know, that's just, it's just creating more of that culture that deprioritizes sleep. And it's unfortunate, right? But hopefully in the industry, we can continue to do more things that, that show people the importance. And then maybe even more importantly is provide them practical strategies that help them to make some improvements. Right, right? so let's talk yeah. about that yeah. for a minute. First off, what are the problems with people sleeping first? Yeah. And what is the solution? Yeah, so obviously deprioritization, like people not prioritizing enough is, is, a, is a problem, right? But I think the, the element of sleep that doesn't get talked about nearly enough and where people struggle, struggle is actually the behavioral side of things, right? So people, if you see any sleep education and things that exist now, all of it's really centered around sleep hygiene. Right, right, lifestyle right. hacks, right. turn the lights down, right? Try to limit these foods during Wear these times. Wear the glasses. Exactly, and all those things can be yeah. beneficial. All those things can play a role. All those things can be helpful. The problem is they're not really the root cause of why a lot of people are struggling, right? The root cause of why a lot of people are struggling is behavioral in nature. It's the stress and anxiety in their life and the stress and anxiety that's built up around their sleep and their inability to sleep especially for somebody who's been struggling with sleep for any extended period of time, 
it becomes very behavioral in nature. It becomes, they lose their confidence in their ability to sleep, right? And these negative associations form over time and they just expect to be in bed and be awake and unable to sleep. And so I always try to focus on those things because one, I think they're much more impactful. And two, they're the areas that don't get talked about nearly enough, Yeah. right? So. Yeah, I, I, it resonates with me. I found myself last night doing the same thing. Oh, I gotta go to bed, great. I know I'm not gonna be able to sleep. Yeah. And I yeah. knocked myself down immediately with the yeah. idea that I, and I didn't, I didn't sleep. Yeah, exactly. And it's, what's, what's so interesting about sleep that I always point out, like, it gets lumped with exercise and nutrition, right? The three pillars of health. And, and in a lot of ways it can be similar, but in one way that it's very different is that there's no willpower involved in sleep, right? So when we talk about exercise and nutrition to a certain extent, there's willpower, there's dedication and commitment, there's, there's those elements and you can will yourself to doing what you need to do. Sleep is the opposite, right? You need to surrender that will, and the more that you're, the more that you're That's trying good. to empower and willpower and focus on it, the, the harder it is to actually sleep, right? We know when our head hits the pillow, it's mind racing, racing thoughts, all those things, right? And so, it's kind of the opposite. And so, for especially like everybody who's here this weekend, right? High-level athletes and people who are in that mentality, they try and bring that mentality to sleep. And it's, it's just not the same. But you're right. in Vegas, too, and there's a problem because well, yes. everyone's here to enjoy and yes. also work and also see Vegas and also see people. Yes. And it's sometimes people don't want to leave the environment because they go back to something they're not real excited about going back to. For sure. And here they're kind of like in another like world and like don't wanna, they so don't want to um, – Miss it's out an, on it's anything, an right? Somebody that never sleeps. Yeah. Try to find sleep. Yeah. No, right. That's, and that's then you got true. the lights going on, and you're like, oh, it's so yeah. bright this, out. Yeah. This, this this weekend is probably not the best weekend to <laughs> no. start your new sleep, sleep journey. No. Um, wait, wait till you get home to start. Exactly. It. Yeah. It's Monday. You start your diet on a Monday, right? Hey, exactly. Exactly. Some, on a something like yeah. that. Yeah. Because <laughs> again, it's those associations, right? So the more that people build stress and anxiety around it. So if you're if you're in Vegas or if you're traveling or whatever for a weekend. Give yourself a little bit of credit. Know that you're not gonna right. you're not gonna turn things around that weekend. That's okay. Um, but it's all about again creating that positive relationship and mentality moving forward, so that when you do get back home, it's something you prioritize and you prioritize in the right way. So, what are some uh, some helpful hints to sleeping? Yeah. So a couple things, and again, I'm gonna focus more on the behavior stuff than the the lifestyle because again, I think they're more important. And people have probably heard a lot of the behavioral stuff already, so I'm not gonna recommend the screen time limiting or any of those things, right. but a couple things that you can think about, and the first and foremost is just taking an honest assessment of how you feel about your sleep and your ability to sleep, so like you mentioned, right? Challenging the thoughts that you have where you're saying, okay, I'm already expecting that I'm gonna sleep. I'm already telling myself that I'm a poor sleeper, okay? So I, I always challenge people to just be honest with accepting those things, even writing them down on paper, right? Because one of the first things I do in the coaching process with somebody is we get a, a list of those things, we take an honest look at them, and it's how do we restructure those things, right? Because if I know that we can kind of rewrite those things that you might believe, if I can point out some things that show you the way you think about your sleep is really not the case, we can start to change it and make it your new reality, right? And that's not something that obviously happens overnight. It's something that takes a bit of time and commitment to, but if you think about it, that's kind of the first step. Because again, going back to the lifestyle stuff, right? You can make every lifestyle hack in the book, but if that's fundamentally how you think about your sleep, you're always gonna come back to that. It's always gonna hold you back, right? So that's why I say that's the first kind of starting point and make sure that you take an honest assessment of those things and try and alter those thoughts and those perceptions, right? Yeah. So that's kind of step one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the little tricks that I have, I'm thinking about this, because Friday night, or sorry, Thursday night, because we I got here Wednesday, Wednesday we went out and had dinner, and we, we were tired, so I thought. Sure. But Thursday night, I made sure I was like in my room, cleaned up, ready to go to bed, and I still couldn't sleep. And I realized I was excited about Friday, and all it was a lot of new things of, for us coming up, and all the people that we're going to be talking to. So Absolutely. I was like, my brain was. But one of the things that I didn't do that I normally do is I normally carry my own pillow. Okay. Yep. And the pillows on the bed, the bed's comfortable here, but they're really big. And Definitely. I'm like, Definitely. 
And so I literally can't use those pillows, and those were keeping me awake. And then I was like, I just finally had to take it out and just lay on it. But I didn't bring my pillow. And I have, I like a little small roll. I can roll it up and whatever. But yeah. And I know that that's one thing for me is my neck placement. Definitely. Well, is, familiarity too, right? I mean, yeah. Well, the yeah. Idea. There's an element of familiarity and whatever little things you need to do that I give you that, yeah, to give you that comfort, yeah. right? Yeah. And, I, and one thing I think that's really important to point out, just because you mentioned that scenario, people over focus on sleep duration, right? So I'm not going to say that sleep duration doesn't matter, like how many hours you sleep, because it absolutely does. But people over focusing on sleep duration sometimes causes a problem, right? So you get an example like that. Somebody goes out, right? You're out. You're you're kind of stimulated. You're you're amped up, right? You're excited. You're not you're not ready for sleep. Your brain's not right. ready for sleep. You're not ready for the day to be over. Your body's not ready for sleep. But because people think in terms of duration, like oh, I need eight hours. I need seven hours every night, every situation. They'll force themselves to go to sleep, right? Get and what ends bed, up right? what ends up happening is they end up lying there, not able to sleep, because again, they're not ready. That was me. Right? That's me. And yep. you're not getting the seven, eight hours anyway. And, and now frustrated. you're frustrated and you're creating this association, this kind of feedback loop of, oh, I'm in bed, not able to sleep. And it just, the yeah. more that that happens I'm and the in more, trouble. yeah, you get stuck. And that's like I said, that's where people, a lot of people get stuck. And when it becomes a more long term issue, it's because of those associations. So the more that you can break those things. So for someone in that situation, I'd much rather they stay up a little bit later, wind down, right? Whatever it is that allows you to wind down, you read, you do breath work, whatever it is that allows you to come down a little bit and then go to sleep. Even if it means you're getting six hours instead of seven and a half, it's gonna be much better quality. It's gonna be much more efficient and you're not creating those negative associations, right? As a coach, a sleep coach, which is really unusual for me to say, but I think yep. that's pretty awesome. Do you have clients that would be in that situation and be messaging you like, hey coach, I can't sleep. You know, guys, when you're a, a personal trainer or you're prepping someone for a show or people you're a nutritionist, will check, people will check in. Yeah, they're or, like yeah. messaging all the time, like, hey, I got this issue, or I'm at this dinner, can you help me? I used to clients and they'd message me like I'm going to this dinner here's my menu what do I eat yeah right, yeah so there's there's definitely meanwhile you're trying to sleep and you're getting the text message I can't sleep like, yeah no there's definitely an element of that because I think my big thing with why sleep coaching should be a thing is it requires a lot of the same elements as other types of coaching right so it requires yeah sure it's a little different but it requires the same type of coaching accountability support right checking with people hand holding them a bit in the process and so especially at the beginning there's definitely a lot of that of people making sure they're doing the right things and just needing that that support right because again if somebody's been sleeping poorly for a long time it's anybody who's experienced that and knows what that's like it it sucks right it's it it affects a lot of areas of your life and so that's where coaching can be so valuable to just help you navigate that along the way right because it's I got a question for yeah. you you know, you talk about eight hours worth of sleep. You know, that's something we've all been inundated with since we can remember how long we needed to sleep. Sure. I'm hearing more and more now that circadian rhythm really comes in cycles. Yeah. You know a little bit about that? And how yeah, that absolutely. Yeah, so so a couple things. So cycles, when you talk about sleep cycles, yeah. okay, I'll put this in a very, like, more simple, simple way. You go through all of your stages of sleep in a, a full sleep cycle, and it happens roughly every 90 minutes. That's okay, so it's... Yeah descending levels of sleep. Each level is a little bit deeper, meaning you reap more physiological benefits in each of those stages, right? The deeper, the more restorative that sleep is. And that's that's where people put a lot of the emphasis on, okay, I need, I need more deep sleep. I need to get more deep sleep, right? Gotcha. So again, you go through those stages every 90 minutes. So one of the big pillars to healthy sleep is going through those stages uninterrupted. Okay. So like we call it fragmenting your sleep, right? Not getting your sleep fragmented, not getting those sleep cycles to be disrupted at all, right? So noise and external factors, things like that can disrupt your sleep cycles is one thing, right? The, the environment you create leading into going to sleep, right? If you, if you create the right environment, your body's in the right state of mind, you're gonna tend to get a little bit deeper into sleep and it's gonna be harder for you to get pulled out of those stages of sleep, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's the, that's the cycles piece. The circadian rhythm piece is, is absolutely huge, okay? So the, 
the circadian rhythms on one side you have the fact that well i should backtrack you have these internal clocks okay they operate on a roughly 24 hour rhythm and these clocks these internal clocks are in every single cell in your body every organ system and they dictate a lot of your physiological processes right a lot of these things almost everything operates on these preferred rhythms right one of the things that operates on there is the preferred time to go to bed and wake up right what is your preferred time to go to sleep and your preferred time to to wake up in the morning those circadian rhythms are influenced by two things genetics a smaller percentage than people think right but genetics plays a role we've all heard night owls or morning larks right so there is a there is a genetic component but more importantly what influences these circadian rhythms and clocks is the environment okay environmental factors light is the biggest one right so that's why light gets so much attention because light communicates to the master clock yeah. so there's a cluster of cells in the brain that's called the master clock that essentially then communicates to all these other clocks throughout the rest of your body basically tells them what to do when to do it so again all those things that ha happen on those clocks when certain hormones rise and fall when different even from a performance standpoint when you have your greatest skeletal muscle strength when you have your greatest cardiovascular efficiency okay so when you disrupt those clocks you disrupt everything on there so light speaks directly to that master clock that then communicates to everything else that's why light is so important right we know that people don't get enough natural daylight during the day and we know that they're exposed to too much artificial light in the evening right so in Vegas, in Vegas it's the yeah. absolute worst, right? Sure. You walk around the casinos, there's no windows, it's kind there's, of like there's that, no, no yeah. yeah, oh yeah, there's right. no, there's right. no uh, clocks. People right. have no perception of yeah. what time of day it is and or whatever it is, yeah. right? But so that's why that light piece is so so important. Yeah, I think this is awesome. I will tell you, this conversation certainly hasn't put me to sleep. No, right? There's so much. There's so uh, many questions I have because my, my, I've that done. That's my sleep humor. I'm sorry, you said it didn't put you to sleep. No, it didn't, right? It's like... It didn't put me to sleep. No, I said it didn't put, didn't me, to put me to sleep. It didn't put me to sleep. No, it's very I love it. interesting. Sorry, very sorry. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's, I really, <laughs> really is interesting. No, there's, yeah. there's a lot to unpack. I think it's like one of those things where everything in the industry we overcomplicate. Yeah. Right. Right? For the most part. Right. Sleep, we oversimplify. Oh, it's just like, do you sleep? Okay, yes. Yes or no. But... Obviously, there's we could have conversation for hours. There's so much you yeah. could there's unpack. So many influences like alcohol or food and what you've eaten and how it's affected you and yep. hormones and yeah. all of those things, right? That are just uh, and then my uh, little my little uh, silly thing. My dad, when we were kids, my dad used to ask me, "Did you slumber in your sleep last night?" No. No. Because we thought slumber was like weird thing, you know? We yeah, yeah. slumber. <laughs> Anyways, old joke yeah. my dad used to say when we were kids. Yeah, this is all really cool, and I think that I think more people are becoming aware of sleep. So I appreciate your perspectives, and, yeah. uh, and tell everybody how they can find you. And yeah, absolutely. So I guess the easiest way is on Instagram. It's at the online sleep coach. So T H E online sleep coach. I'm always open to questions and conversations around sleep. So definitely feel free to reach out or good information. Yeah. Maybe you can get them on the on the gym life media oh, yeah. sometime they and have another have a, brainstorm. A big deep conversation about what's yeah. going on. Oh, right? I'm all for it. Let's yeah. do it. Let's so go. Let's, do it. let's go deep. deep. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We, go deep sleep. Go deep sleep. Go deep, 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 deep sleep. sleep. We need that. Yeah. Sleep, sleep performance. Okay. Sleep. One last thing, and yes. I want to let you go. Okay. I guess the problem with doing the snooze is that if you end up going back to sleep, you get stuck in one of those those layers that you didn't get to finish. Right? Yeah. Is that correct? So no snooze, snooze, don't push the snooze alarm? I Yes, I highly recommend that you do not press the snooze button. You're better off getting up. Um, one thing within that that I would recommend highly for everybody, anyone listening, get a daylight alarm clock. I have You one. can find cheap ones. I have ones. one. They are a much more pleasant way to wake up. The sun. Yep, it sets that circadian rhythm right. for the day, awesome. and it's just a much more pleasant way to wake up. So I have I one, recommend it. and I lost the, um, the directions. I need to find the directions because I'm like, yeah, get, alarm clocks. get it set up. Get All right, set up. All right guys. Alarm clocks. Yep. Thank well, you so much. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Nick. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for thank having you. me. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yep. Awesome. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll be right back with more awesome interviews here at the Monica Brand Show and Olympia. Yeah.